What is going on guys? Back on the allotment, brand new day. I've got the van loaded up with the planters, all in here. I'm gonna drive them to the front. I've got some people meeting me just outside the allotment. Um, now, I wanna mention about the price because I, you guys are really looking out for me in the comments yesterday in that video, it's unbelievable. Don't sell yourself too short. You're selling them too cheap. Um, you need to up your prices from here on the, <laughs> I know they're cheap, you know, majority of these are 15 pound full. And that included uh, the plants, the stones, the compost, the feed, and, and the, the, the actual planter itself. Uh, 15 quid, it's a bargain. I, I kind of wanted it to be a bargain. Now I work on a principle that if I can double sort of an investment, that's fantastic. That's the way to do it. So if I can spend seven quid, making these and make back 14, 15 quid, I'm done. That's all I want. I was talking to a lady yesterday that, that wanted one of these planters and they'd all sold. I'd made 16 in total and sold 16 overnight because they're cheap. And she said that she was in the garden centre and she saw them full uh, with strawberries, very similar to mine and thinner wood. And they were 55 pound each. And she wanted two so that she could get her children into growing fruit and veg. And they were filled with strawberries. She said, but 110 pound seemed a bit much if her kids turned out not to be interested. And second to that, how many strawberries can she buy with 110 pound? It's not a cheap thing. Um, going through the, the images and the, the people on, online and on Facebook who are doing what I'm doing and who are selling the same sort of planters that they're making, these are the best quality and the cheapest planters, hence why I've sold 16. So yeah, if I can make back, what's that work out? I haven't even done the math. If I can make back a little bit of pocket money to put back into the allotment and put towards the shed while giving somebody a bargain, you know, when I was starting out gardening, there was nothing like this. I couldn't, there's no way I could get a four foot by one foot planter with, made with one and a half inch thick timber filled with plants and stones to keep the weeds down and keep it moist um for 15 pounds you know there are people that do them but it didn't exist i would have killed for something like that to get me started you know if i could have put in 60 quid and had two strawberries or two tomato plants or or, or even one filled with courgettes or something that that's a really good way to start off i think i just think giving people back something for cheap is a good thing to do especially if it gets youngsters gardening why can't people get a bargain if i make a little bit on the side that's all so uh yeah, I scavenged wood from my wood stock yesterday so I could make her the two that she wanted. And I gave her two full planters, two for 25, filled with the remaining strawberries um, so she could get, get, uh, get her kids you know, started with growing strawberries. This is a good starting block. Um, that was delivered. These are being collected, all of them, because uh, obviously the van is a diesel and it's not cheap to run. So yeah, I'm looking at about 50% mark up on all of these and yeah they could have gone for you know 30 quid 40 quid you know easily but they would have required more work i think there's a lot if i just bring you down there's a lot wrong with them um by the way what am i on about they're brilliant no <laughs> they're, they're not 100 symmetrical they're not all the same height there's a few uh gaps and stuff I, you know <laughs> this is one of the planters. We've put the drainage holes in the bottom and all that's left to do is put feet on. Now, I know that I've been talking about planters and things like that for the last few days. Uh, the reason is it's been building up to another Pallet Projects video because I don't yet have a video on how I make these planters from pallets. So later on this evening, I, I plan on creating a playlist of all the Pallet Projects, including the beds that you see down here and <laughs> camera woman and the pallet fence as well as a few other little bits and pieces uh, and i've got some some ideas in the future including the pallet bench which i know i said i will make a video on uh, and that did get some comments from you guys in the uh, comments section of the video so I, I, i've got stuff lined up but for now i've got one more pallet left of 16 that i've broken and made these uh, troughs from 
So I figured, why not? We're going to make a little video. I'll just show you how I put them together. And if anyone's got pallets lying around that, you know, likes the idea of a trough or a planter, you can do the same. So yeah, step one is going to just be breaking the pallet and then we'll go from there. As always, I just use a piece of pallet wood. It's the easiest thing, you tend to not get any splits. Just use the leverage of the of the piece of wood. You can obviously put your foot on it, make it a bit easier just to pop it off. one we always have to use uh, one of the slats just to get some leverage there we go a few splits but yeah so these um good information these are more like staples in here than they are nails so what we're going to do is because they're really hard to to bash out they're really flexible as you can see they're really bendy so knocking them out is a, is a bit difficult. So instead we're just gonna chop them off and then whatever's left protruding, we'll just tap over. And it just means that there's no nails. So if you did wanna get in and turn the soil or the compost, you could without any risk of sort of scratching yourself on a nail. So yeah, I'll get these little croppers that I've got and we'll cut these off. So in here, I've got these things. I think, uh, they're actually fence cutters. They used to have a spring in here so that when you squeeze it, it sprung back. They're old, but they still work. They still do the job. So if you come down here, all we want to do is just straighten that out a bit. These are more like nails than all the other pallets, but they're still too flexible to tap out. So all I do is I put them on there, get a hold of it, and just you know snap it off like that. And then take a hammer, or in this case, an ax, and just kind of, that into the wood now of course if you want to knock them out knock them out i don't see any need to you know that is you know you're more likely to get a splinter than you are anything else so we just continue that straight on there turn them up the right way around get hold of that health and safety guys make sure that you wear eye protection and gloves do as i say not as i do <laughs> just get hold of that knock that off Sure, I don't lose these because I don't want to punch her in the tyres. So that's one board. We'll continue that for all eight of them because it does take eight lengths to make one of these troughs. What I've been doing on the original planters that Kelly asked me to make, which are the ones sat outside the shed, was I was using batten wood and pallet wood inside. So what I was doing was originally taking another slat and putting it on the top and then screwing it from both sides just to give it strength. All that does is, well, two things. One, it eats into the internal space of the, the planter or the trough. And the other thing that it does is makes it very difficult to drill in the drainage holes because I have to go through two inches of wood. Um, and thirdly, it's just unnecessary. So what I've now been doing is I'm leaving the, the rougher, dirtier side on the outside because it's already been weathered. So although I could put it on the inside because the, the compost would be up against it, I'd rather the, the rustic side was on show really. That's how I like it. And all I've been doing is lining them up like that and again like that and then drilling in pilot holes into each of the corners, making sure that everything is, is level and square. That's why I'm using the bed as a, a bit of a table because I know that it's level and square. And all I'm looking to do is just go through the first slat fully and touch the slat that I'm actually going into because that's going to be what the screw gets its bite from. So that's plenty. 
And then what I'm doing is placing a two inch screw just into that hole that I've drilled. And then that's gonna go directly through into the back. And then what I'm gonna do is actually drive it even further. This is an inch thick, so it can take it if the screw head is actually inside the wood ever so slightly. Just like that. So now it's sort of hidden from sight. Uh, you can't really see it and it sort of just blends in with the rest of the pallet. And obviously that'll give it a little bit more strength because the screw's been driven in a bit further. So I'll repeat that on all four corners and then uh, come back when that's done. So for those of you that have been following the channel for a long time, you'll know that I do tend to measure a lot. You know, like when I built the hen house and the polytunnel, it was all measurements. You know, I did everything by the book. But for something like this, I tend not to get out the spirit level. I tend to just do it by eye. Uh, it adds to the sort of rustic feature of these beds, I think. So this is how I measure up the end pieces. And I did mention it on a previous video that if I cut the two slats at the bottom, if I take an inch off, I'll be able to sort of put this up against it and it would kind of give it a bit of a neater look. If you compare that to this one over here that I've done, I've had to basically take off an inch of the top slat. For me, I think that makes it stronger from drilling into the sides because the screws have something quite thick to drive into. Whereas if I put this on the face of it, so for example, if I put that on the, on the face there, it would look quite nice. But for me, it doesn't look as rustic. It doesn't look as homemade. And I genuinely don't feel it would be as strong. Hence why I'm doing it the difficult way by taking an inch off of each one. So all I'm gonna do is put that in there like that until I'm sort of happy that it's kind of square. Bearing in mind that this needs to be pulled in ever so slightly. So just like that. And I'll just take my line from there. So although it's rustic, they still look quite nice and they're strong. weathered side on the outside to blend in with the rest of the bed so that will fit in there like that and as we screw it together it will bring everything nice and tight so I'll just do the same as I did on the, the bottom ones and basically do two pilot holes each side until both ends are fixed you come around this side baby we're not looking for perfection just looking for something that will be quite strong and again we're going to drive these underneath the wood get them both set first and we'll come back and knock them in just underneath so you can hardly see them so now that we've got that all screwed in we can build up from it. Now, the other reason for doing it this way is because it kind of aids it going together really easily. So as you can see, these bits protrude out, meaning that now I've got somewhere to place the top slat. So I can just line it up on there, pilot hole, screw on both ends. And then all we've got left to do is the two tops. So just going into the first piece of wood, Make sure everything is as lined up as it can be. And then again, just underneath the wood. And we'll do that on both ends. And as you can see, it's starting to come together and it's starting to look more like a, a trough. just underneath the wood. And then once we've got to this stage, I then take another slat of wood and my pencil, and all I do is I roughly line it up to where it's gonna go, knowing, and bearing in mind that I need to bring this end in, as you can see, it was screw flush. And all we do is just a rough pencil line. I mean, by all means, you can measure it if you want to, 
I don't tend to. <laughs> uh, and then we'll cut this corner um, and then we'll basically take an inch off of it. It might be a good idea if we do that first. So if I put that on top of there and take the pencil, all we're wanting to do is come, come in on here. So we do a pencil line there and just kind of trace it around. We can then take we can then take an additional piece of, of wood and follow that pencil line that was there just down. Only rough. So then what we need to do is basically come in from here and across there. We'll do this cut first because it would be really tricky trying to take an inch off of you know a piece of wood that was only one foot long. And for this, we'll use the circular saw. Slightly rough cut, <laughs> but it should fit quite nicely, and they do. And then we'll take our, our final board, and that would sit on there like that. And once everything is screwed tight together, there shouldn't be any gaps really. Uh, and then we'll go on to the next step, which would be drainage holes and a few more screws that need to be placed in certain positions to give this thing added strength. on the back as you can see it's kind of it do, kind of doesn't fit but as it gets screwed together you'll see it all starts to tighten up just like that but as you can see we have got strength now in that corner um, potentially more than if we'd have done it the traditional way Plus, it's different. <laughs> so we've got one more end to do. But before I do that, I just want to turn it on its side. Um, and if you come over here, what it is, is... So we've got one more end to do. But before we do that, because that's the end that's going to sort of bring this all really tight. If you remember, we put the screws into each end, but there's nothing actually in the middle. So what that will mean is I do intend to put feet on each corner of the bottom and it would mean that in time these two would sag out. So what we're going to do is just drive in one screw just into the side which will th then go into the bottom. Just like that. And that will stop the bottom ever falling out both sides. Just like that. And now that that's done, we can put the final end piece on. And as you can see guys, look, for not having the battens, what was originally a design that looked like that, and also on the sides we had them here, is now quite large in space inside so yeah you, you do quite well you can probably do potatoes in there you could do quite well to get a lot in there yeah the final end piece which will just get screwed onto here and then we'll come back when we do the drainage holes so now that we got the trough sort of done there's only one more step to do and 
it's one that I feel that I need to do, otherwise this thing won't last as long. So if you come down a bit closer, you'll see that there's nothing actually supporting these two, i.e. there's nothing joining them. So in time, potentially, that could bow out and warp. So all I'm gonna do is bring it close together and drive a screw in at an angle into each side. And that will mean that the sides won't be able to, to separate or come apart. Now I could have put a batten on here, but I'm trying to keep as much wood out of this because once these are filled, they weigh over 20 kilos. <laughs> Just like that. And then what we'll do is we'll now put the drainage holes in. So in the bottom. I'd aim for five on something like this, I think. So if we start in the middle here, just using the, the uh, I can't remember the actual name of this now, I've got like 15 comments of people telling me what this was called, and I keep forgetting, it's this thing. <laughs> it makes holes. <laughs> <laughs> so just roughly find the middle, put it on the right setting for a start. As you can see, it's quite thick wood. <laughs> so then we'll do, we'll try and stagger these a little bit. So we'll do one up here as well. Some are easier than others. And then again, we'll do one over here. I think we'll just continue that pattern until we get to the end. Which would be there. You can do as many or as little as you like. I tend to aim for this many. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, we don't want too many because we don't want this to dry out. You know, depending on what goes in it, it might need more water or less water. Um, but for something like strawberries, I think five is, is adequate uh, and we'll do the job. So yeah, now the final thing is this thing needs some feet. Because if this sits directly on the floor, you know, in, in, an, in rain or in a puddle, it's going to rot out quicker. So if we can just get some leftover pallet wood, which we have down here on the floor. We've taken the nails out of it. And again, just roughly, we just kind of want to line it up. I don't want it all the way to the edge. I just want it kind of just supporting supporting the bed just off of the floor and just make a little just a little mark in there and we'll cut it there what we're gonna do is pop two screws into each one no pilot hole is needed and then um, and that should be adequate. This wood's got a bit of a thicker grain, so it's less likely to split. And the same on there, try and get the distance apart the same. Roughly. What was that, Joe? Roughly. <laughs> By putting the drainage holes where we've put them, there's no risk of covering them up when we put the feet on. And there we go. That is one pallet trough, which is ready to be planted up with whatever you like, really. I'm going to be using it for strawberries. And, um, yeah, we'll see if we can make a few more. We'll line them out and we'll show you them, possibly show you them done, but that's how easy it can be. And you know, that's upcycling. You saw the pallet that we used. You know, it's a bit better quality than a standard pallet. So this should last a lot longer than if we'd done it with thinner wood, but you can do it with any wood really. It doesn't even need to be pallets. If you've got old wood lying around or old timber, 
utilize it, make something useful out of it, and keep your lady happy. Because that is the most important thing. We're gonna go plant this up. <laughs> so me and Kelly have taken cover in the shed as it's just started raining really bad. And I'm just going through the comments. So yeah, you guys are absolutely right. These planters are cheap. And the comment here from someone called Barry Roberts is what I wanna read. Um, I've had so many comments from you guys telling me that I need to up the price, up the price. This one's kind of a good way of doing it. So yeah, the guy's name is Barry Roberts and he says, great video, but it's a bit disappointing to find out how much you were selling these planters for. Before you mentioned how much you was thinking, I thought a minimum of 30 pound and a maximum of 50 pound. Because remember, it takes you time to find the pallets, take the pallets apart, denail the pallets, cut them to size, screw them together, and then obviously add the compost, which isn't free, the plants that were not originally free, and the stones that you put in there as well. I'm sure if you mentioned the price rise, people would understand. Just explain it that it was only a trial. I like that idea. Just because we have been absolutely inundated today. So I've made three more planters today. It's taken me about three hours. And in that time, we have had another 20 plus messages. Uh, and of the 16 that I made, 14 was collected today. Someone didn't show up. But of that, of those 14 people, they've been sending me pictures of them in their, you know, put them in their garden and we'd like to order more and things like that. So there's definitely a market for them. Uh, and I think, you know, Barry Roberts saying to maybe go at it as a trial price is a good idea. Now, personally, I wouldn't want to go above 20 pound in case you know, people start to spot the flaws and you know, the ones that you get in the DIY stores and things like that are normally laser cut. Um, everything is so precise that they're, they're kind of worth their money just in being that precise really. So yeah, I'm completely out of pallets now, but if I get more, I will make more planters. I want to sort of experiment with different sizes as well. I'd like some square ones for outside the shed, just with some, um, I'm not sure, quite sure what I'd want in them yet, but just a bit of structure around by the shed. So yeah, I'd like to say thank you all once again for all your encouragement. Um, originally, I didn't think I was selling myself short, you know, giving someone a bargain. Like I said earlier, if I was starting out and I didn't know too much about about gardening, I wouldn't really want to throw hundreds of pounds at it. So to, to spend, you know, 15 pound on something that's sort of going to grow itself, like strawberries, for example, I think is a, is a good thing. But going forwards, I'll take all your advice on board and I'll... I'll up the price accordingly. You know, if I can make them a bit better quality, I'll up it again. But yeah, I'm not a garden center. You know, I'm not trying to make millions. It was just an idea to get rid of the, the old pallets and put the money back into the allotment. And yeah, so far so good. So yeah, thanks again guys for all the encouragement over the last few days in regards to these planters.